Uh, good evening, dear friends. I wish to address what I have to say tonight to President Ramaphosa. But I would like to dedicate my few words to Babita, dear Karen, and to all whistleblowers. Tonight, Mr. President, we are addressing you from the People's Cathedral. Only the swift action of the security here and the firefighters prevented this holy place from being destroyed like the National Assembly just a few days ago. Thanks be to God, the forces of darkness are on the rampage, but they shall be defeated. During the struggle against apartheid, we prayed for the downfall of the apartheid regime. We were inspired by our faith to fight for freedom and to sacrifice our lives to bring justice to our land. We told our people that God was with us and that our cause is just. Apartheid was defeated. The majority of South Africans believed that by voting for the ANC, a better life would be delivered for all God's people. The opposite has happened. Today, apart from the corrupt who are still walking free, millions of us are now disillusioned, angry and frustrated, and many are worse off than they were under apartheid. You will recall, Mr. President, that the faith community united to call for the resignation of Jacob Zuma because the actions showed he no longer had the moral legitimacy to be our president. When you became our president, you promised the end of impunity. From this cathedral, on Christmas Eve 2019, Archbishop Tabo called for 2020 to be the year of the orange overall. It has not yet happened. As the letter of James said, faith without action is meaningless, as you well know. Millions of us no longer believe the slogans of any political party in our country. Mr. President, you now have the responsibility to act on two reports, Zondo and your own panel of experts on what you said was an insurrection. By the way, you told us that you knew who were responsible, but we have not seen anyone yet arrested. The nation is watching, but time is short. Mr. President, many millions of South Africans will support you if you act decisively to implement both reports. The whole world listened to what you said here in this cathedral at the funeral of Archbishop Desmond and Pilo Tutu. And we were proud that you honored him as the spiritual father of our nation. You recall that the same Archbishop Tutu told your predecessor to watch out, that he would pray for the downfall of the ANC government just as he did for the apartheid government. If we do not see you implementing Zondo's recommendations and those of your panel of experts, then it will not be long before faith leaders will be encouraging us to pray for the downfall of the ANC government. Last Saturday, many of us from the Cape Town Faith Initiative relaunched the Charter for Compassion 
what we as South Africans call Ubuntu. We wish to see your cabinet asking itself before all major decisions, is it an act of compassion to the whole nation, especially the poorest and to Mother Earth? For us as people of faith, the test of your government is how the poor, the foreigner, and the orphan are treated. Just a few days ago, you stepped down from being chair of the African Union. We expect your voice to be the loudest against xenophobia. Thank you for beginning to give away half your salary. Perhaps in future, you will donate towards little known organizations such as those walk, working to end the violence of men against women and for women's empowerment. <laughs> Mr. President, please challenge your cabinet colleagues to give away one third of their salaries and invite the captains of industry to do the same. We cannot be a compassionate society without a basic income grant now. At the State Memorial of F.W. de Klerk, you lauded the support for our, con you lauded his support for our Constitution. Meanwhile, outside, police were manhandling members of the Imam Harun Foundation protesting your unwillingness to meet them and speak out for families of apartheid era victims like the Craddock Four. Your silence is shameful. Since COVID, it's estimated that close on 100,000 children became orphans, adding to the millions of AIDS orphans and orphanages are full. As our first family, please can you adopt the child who is not your blood relative and invite all of us who can afford to do the same. We need to make whistleblowers the saints and heroes of our time. Mr. President, please propose a special category of national awards for whistleblowers. As one of the principal architects of our Constitution, you undermine yourself and us by keeping in your cabinet those who make gratuitous attacks on judges and the Constitution. Mr. President, I pray that your backbone will stiffen. And, and, and that your heart will be filled with compassion. Fellow South Africans, it's our country. Let us all play our part in building the land of our dreams. And Kosi Sikilele e Africa. I thank you. <laughs>